Reef Dudes is sponsored by Ecotech Marine and Bulk Reef Supply. Today we're talking about water clarity in your aquarium. What's going on guys? Devin from Reef Dudes. So today we are digging into water clarity. Now if you know me, I love a silent tank and I love a nice clear tank. Now what is water clarity? Water clarity is where you don't even notice the water. You know, it looks like your fish are floating. That just like pristine look. And now there's a couple of different things we got to consider. We have our mechanical filtration to remove the particles from the water. And we also have to think about the organics in the water because that's going to add that yellowy, that tinge and take away from the clarity of it. So there's a few different methods we can go about this to get that crystal clear water. So let's get into it. So what exactly do I mean about water clarity? Um, if you're looking through the tank and you almost don't even really notice the water, you know, it looks like your, your fish are floating and there's no particles or anything anywhere. You, you almost kind of forget there's water in the tank. And that's kind of the really sweet spot when you know you've re reached that ultimate clarity. Now, the camera honestly does not do it justice. This is, sometimes you kind of got to see this in person to fully appreciate it. but not even really noticing the water is like a really really cool effect now again as i mentioned earlier at first we got to talk about how to mechanically move the particles and how we deal with any organics that would add that yellowy tinge to the water and take away from the clarity on the mechanical side there's definitely a few different options here the most common way is probably filter socks and they absolutely do work they're probably one of the cheapest method but they're also the most maintenance as you're gonna have to pull those socks out and clean them every three to five days to otherwise they're gonna clog up and then you're losing all the benefits um, if, you, if you do something like a filter roller then you can go in a couple months between maintenance and that was kind of the big sell to me is I don't have to deal with it you know multiple times per week I deal with it once every you know two to three months and we're in a pretty happy place now something a lot of people don't think about is if you have a Cato Chato Refugium Ketomorpha. If you have a really dense mat in there, that is going to capture particles. Now, that will definitely help for water clarity, but the only downfall is you're going to have, if you disturb it, you're going to have all that stuff be released back out into the tank. So you're going to, you're going to want to rinse it out once in a while and clean out some of that massive mess inside of it. Now there's other st different types of rollers, but I'm going to say those are the most common types, but it's basically something to physically capture and remove the particles. Now there's another thing you can do using something like a calcium carbonate or coral snow, which is basically the same thing. And it acts as a flocculant. So you add it to the water, it's gonna bind those particles and then it's gonna help your skimmer remove them. So as your skimmer removes them, same thing, it's gonna take them under your tank and give you much better water clarity. There's also another method that we talked about way back in the past called micro bubble scrubbing. And that's a similar concept, it kind of acts like a flocculant as all those little micro bubbles are in your tank, they're gonna to attach to stuff. Kind of like your protein skimmer does, and it's gonna take those little bits of organics and little bits of particles, and it's gonna raise them to the surface, and which will be transferred to your overflow, and then it'll get down through the rest of your filtration, so your skimmer. But ideally, you'll have some other form of filter roller, but those are all ways of helping kind of boost that water clarity. Now, the other side of it is gonna be the organic. So that's the yellowy tinge in the water. Now, if you do the bucket test, you take some water, you put it in a five gallon bucket and you'll be able to see how clear or yellow it is. Um, again, or I could put something white at the end of this, you know, my six feet of water and see, you know, how white does it actually look. And those, if this was like a regular tank, I could put a piece of paper at the end and you'd be able to see it, but you can get a pretty good look actually just looking down there, just seeing the camera focus on it, but you can just see how much detail you can see at the very far end. Um, so now this is a combination of a couple things. Now, normally I just use ozone. Now what kind of spurred me to do this video is my camera was actually off for the past week or two and I haven't used my ozone in a while. And I decided to finally clean my skimmer and plug it back in and get it back online. And the next day it was like, dang, that tank looks clear again. Like you almost forget how good it is until you actually run it and you have it again. Now, so ozone is going to break down all those yellowing pigments in the water and give you super, super crystal clear. It really is magical. Now, again, I always say it when people are going to use ozone, you don't want to overdo it. You want to use just enough to achieve your goals of water clarity. Now, you can also use carbon. Now, carbon, again, is going to absorb those organics and use carbon inside of a reactor. Pretty easy to do. For instance, on my Geo's Reef Sump, we got a carbon reactor right in here and this guy forces water through it. Um, I have some rural foss and some carbon in here. And again, running carbon is going to give you really clear water. Now, if you want amazingly clear water, if you run carbon 
and ozone, it's magical. You're like, where does the water go? What water? So I really wish the camera did more just on it, justice on it, but that it really is amazing. So going through here, so carbon works really well. Now carbon will lose its effectiveness over time. You know, usually I only ever change mine every like month or two, but realistically it should something you should probably change, you know, every week or week or two weeks. Um, so it's going to work really well and it's going to slowly diminish rather quickly. So that's the kind of considerations with carbon. Um, it does have some other benefits with the carbon as well as the ozone. It one removes all those yellowing organics in the water, which is going to help give you super clear water. Um, and if you have a mixed reef tank and lots of different corals, it's also going to help absorb and take out some of those toxins that you're going to get from kind of coral warfare in the tank. Now that kind of works both ways actually. That the ozone to an extent will help break down stuff and the carbon will help absorb stuff. So either way they're kind of different methods of accomplishing it but they're both going to add to the health of your tank and reduce a lot of the nasties and give you crystal crystal clear water. So those are really your best options for achieving that crystal clear water. Now once you get there trust me you're going to love it. And it, it's honestly, it's hard to believe it until you actually see it for yourself. Now, out of all the things I've done, um, if you want to be a lazy reefer, like a filter roller is the way to go just because you can go so long between maintaining it. Um, I've been using the Clara C, it's been awesome. I use the 5000 on both my tanks. So I have the same roll for either tanks, which just makes, you know, the stuff you got to stock for replacement media really, really easy. Um, I don't know if I'd go to filter stocks again, honestly, just because of the maintenance it takes. If I wasn't going to do anything, I would probably just have a big area of Chato and then that's going to trap particles with just knowing that I'm going to have to clean it once in a while. So that is another kind of consideration if you don't want the consumables of a filter roller. But the filter roller does help keep your sump clean and it does give you that crystal clear from a particulate perspective of the water. Um, personal preference on that one, but you guys got a bunch of different options. You can also use flocculants like the coral snow or calcium carbonate powder in your tank. That goes a really long way. Now, the other aspect of it is those organics. And again, your main options there are carbon or ozone. Um, advantage of carbon, it's cheap, it's safe, it's easy. Um, you know, the next day your tank is gonna look awesome after running it. And it also helps remove those kind of coral toxins if you're running a mixed reef tank. Now, the big advantage of ozone is you don't need to have a consumable. Um, that's one of the biggest things. You're not worrying about carbon all the time. Now, I still run carbon once in a while. I did run some when I changed my reactor the day, I put on some fresh rural foss to knock my phosphate down and added some carbon as well. And the mixture of the two the next day was like, blew my mind how clear it was again. And it's funny because I thought my tank was fine and I almost forgot about it until, you know, I got the ozone going again and carbon in and then just the difference is night and day. But you don't notice it until you see it and then you can't unsee it, how wonderful it is. Um, but yeah, so those are the options. Now with ozone, Again, a few considerations. You don't want to run too much ozone in your house because it's not the best for you. Most people will put carbon on top of your skimmer so that it will absorb any residual ozone. Um, I have CO2 media on top of mine, so it does the recirculating, so no air really escapes from it. I also only run ozone in the middle of the night when no one's around the tank. And I also run a very low amount. So if you're gonna use ozone, one, have an ORP probe, and usually you want to keep it I set mine to shut off at about 410, 415. Um, that way if it's above there, then my ozone doesn't turn on. If it's, you know, somewhere in the threes, less than 400, then my ozone will turn on for a couple hours a night. And now I also always advise people run just enough to get the job done. Uh, out of 10, I think mine's only at like three or something like that. So very low amount through the night using my skimmer, make sure skimmer is rated for if you're gonna go down the ozone route. But it's nice having the consumables of carbon. That being said, I still do run it once in a while just for good measure with coral toxins. Um, but yeah, the ozone will help break them down as well. So there's a couple different ways of looking at it. So if you do want me to dig more into ozone, again, I can do another future video on that one. It's been a while since I've dove into ozone. But really cool ways and kind of a trifecta of different measures to get crystal clear water. And again, the camera doesn't do its justice, but it is like the fish look like they're floating. It really is amazing. So hopefully this inspired you guys to kind of up your clarity game and get that crystal clear water. Uh, I mean, clean glass, clear water, like your tank just looks jaw dropping. So hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. If you learned something, you got any tips of your own, let me know in the comments below. Enjoy to hit that like button. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and I'll catch you guys on the next video.